Hi there, thank you for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to show you my favorite color by number uh, books and some that I have completed and also pages in my newer color by number books. So let's get into it. The first one I want to show you is Our Ocean World Color by Numbers by David Woodruff. I saw this book at um, my local grocery store. It was called Extra Foods and it was there on the shelf and um, I thought it was a really lovely book and when I looked on, well, Amazon, sometimes I look up illustrators and see what other uh, works that they have. This David Woodruff has a whole lot of color by numbers uh, books, some even dot to dot books, and they look really neat. All of them look really interesting, so I'll probably collect more. So let me show you what I did. Um, solutions are on the front page and also on the back page, and then this little flap opens up, and then you can see the whole color palette that is used um, in most of the pictures. The first one I completed uh, was opposite of the title page. So I did this fish, and I used some distress inks just to create a background, and then added some stickles for some interest, like so these bubbles here coming off of the fish. Uh, then I just used felt tip markers for these little fish on, on the actual title page. And there was a little bit of bleed through on this page. You can see it's sort of like little ghost fish on this side. But I colored the seagull using my color, uh, colored pencils. And again, just to create the idea of a sky, I used distress inks and to try and camouflage that the fish from the <laughs> from the previous page had kind of bled through a little bit. Then on the introduction page, there was a beautiful seahorse. So I colored that using colored pencils, but then I overlaid it uh, with a lot of a glitter gel pen. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So that would be my Stardust glitter gel pens. And then to hide the dark lines, I came in with the Signo, uh, you know, the Uniball Signo white gel pen. And I like how that seahorse looks really pretty. The next page I did I used my Tanzai Gambi watercolor paints and it's just it's just so bold and brilliant and I think that's why I really like this color by number book because you can use different mediums and the spaces are large enough if if a person does want to paint in it for the for the uh, seabed I used the uh, the gold like in my Ganzai Tambi watercolor set, there's two different like metallic gold paints, which are really, really fun to work with. So I put that on the seabed. Um, also colored these fish. I just used felt tip markers and a little bit of stickles for the background. Now this page, this was a lot of fun. So I colored these fish using, again, felt tip markers, which are actually the brand is Heathrone. And I really like them. And there's 120 different colors in the set. And where the these lines are that looks very silvery, there you can really see it. It is actually this liquid chrome silver mirror marker and this is a guana brand guana sorry there we go just so you can see in case you're interested in something like that this is a lot of fun i have three of these and they the tips are all have different sizes so i'm not going to kid, kid you it's a it's a strong scent i mean it's the kind that you you shake so it is probably an oil-based uh, marker pen, but it creates a beautiful, like, mirror-like shine. 
I used also some stickles just to uh, add a bit of interest to the idea of the water around the fish. And then just some washi tape just to finish off the border. So a lot of fun. Oops, sorry about that. And then the other page I completed was the mermaid page. So I think I did this one for the idea in the month of May uh, for the, the mermaid <laughs> challenge. And this is a beautiful illustration in this book of the mermaid. And I think I used Prismacolor Premier Pencils. It's so smooth. Yeah, <laughs> it must have been that I used those pencils because they're just so buttery soft. And then for her, her lips, her bodice, and parts of her mermaid tail, I added some glitter, like from, by using glitter gel pen. And that is what I have completed in that, in this book. So our ocean world. The next one is Relax and Color Meditation, Color by Number, 31 Uplifting Designs. And I completed quite a few pages in here. These pages are really all different in their illustration. They give the color palette here on the inside cover page and also every page it's repeated down below. Not every single color in the palette is used in this particular picture. So, so don't worry when you see a color palette like that. You don't, you don't necessarily need all of those colors at, at every given time. Um, so this little picture, I used colored pencils and then used my King Art glitter gel pen because they have lots of different colors and I really wanted to dress up this urn and also because this little girl sleeping at the top has wings I wanted to add a nice little shine for her wings and there are mandalas in this book and those are always fun I used uh, felt tip markers, lots of glitter gel pen. And for the background, I took a Crayola wax crayon, a real soft purpley or lilac color, just to fill in the background. And another mandala. Same idea, felt tip markers, lots of glitter, um, and a bit of really sparkly washi tape just to finish off the border. Now, my favorite page in this book was this one. It is the ladybug picture on the leaves, and then there were bubbles, or rather dewdrops, little uh, dewdrops on the leaves. So I used my color colored pencils to do most of the work and to create that raindrop look on the leaves. I filled in all of the dark lines, or rather not filled in, but colored over with the, the Signal White Gel Pen. I added just a little bit of um, Jelly Roll Glaze Black to do some of the accents on the ladybug. And, and finished off the border with the washi tape which I kind of like because then it covers up the palette at the bottom. So now this page looks like you don't see the numbers coming through because I covered them up. So it looks like a regular coloring page. So, yeah. So I would encourage you if you're working in your color by number books, try different mediums. You know, you don't, you're not limited to just what the color palette is given. You can always change it up. For this page, instead of using so much of the glitter gel pen, right? Because if you use it a lot, like, I mean, that ink really goes down fast and you start using up your pens very quickly. For this one, I just used colored uh, pencils and then went over top of the whole thing um, as an overlay using... Let me grab it here. It is called Glamour Dust. 
Um, this is an acrylic paint. It is uh, mostly transparent. This one is called the Ice Crystal and it gives a beautiful glittery effect. And you know, these pages are on the thinner side. I mean, it, it wrinkled just a little bit, but not bad considering. And I don't mind that it wrinkles the page when you use an acrylic uh, paint on, on something like this. And yes, the washi tape on the top and the bottom. This page, I did use the glitter pen exclusively on the whole page because I don't mind using them up. I love all my glitter gel pens and I'll always sort of keep a good supply of them, but it does use up a lot of, of the ink for sure. What else can I show you? This page, bubbles. Okay, same idea as what I showed before on the ladybug page. Now let me show you on the back, this page, if I had used the color palette as, as it is, it would have looked like this. And for me, okay, maybe they're just circles. I didn't find that very interesting. So I decided I would do something different. And that's why this page actually looks like this. So I took Distress inks, different colors, laid it down in the background, filled up the whole space. And then I came in with the white Signo gel pen, sorry, Signo white gel pen. I always get that one mixed up, but you know what I mean. And covered up all of the black lines so that it had, you know, a chance to look more like bubbles. Then the sheen that you are seeing here, oh, there. What I did for that was I have several colors of these. This is by Folk Art and it is Dragonfly Glaze. That's what it's called and it's a color changing top coat. So very translucent and yeah, the cap always sort of shows you what it's gonna look like. So I have different colors of those, but I just chose one and just did an overlay over some of the bubbles, not the whole thing. I just sort of picked random colors. Yeah, so I like the way that turned out. So again, you can always change up a page if you're not, you know, keen on what the original uh, plan is supposed to be for them. This one, the Paisley page, I used a lot of felt tip markers again. And to you to fill in the background, I used my Moonlight Jelly Roll pen. And I like doing that. Yes, it does take time when you use a Jelly Roll pen or a gel pen of any sort to do a background, but that's relaxing to me, so I like doing that. And I covered up the palette at the bottom with a few strips of washi tape. And the last page is another mandala and same idea with the i used felt tip markers to fill in the colors and then the background was the moonlight a really dark blue uh the jelly roll moonlight pen and so that is relax and color i'll just put this over here now mystery colors uh where's my other one? Oh darn it i put it away Okay, um, there was a mystery colors that I, the whole book, I completed the whole thing. And this is like a, like a magazine that comes out every few months. So I had completed that other one that came out before this one. And to reward myself for completing the whole thing, I, I bought this one. So um, I'll, I'll show you what I did, but if you don't like spoiler alerts, right? Because this is the mystery colors when I open up the page, some people like to be surprised, right? Because the idea is when you color a, in a page, you, you can't really tell what it is until you're about halfway through coloring it and then the image reveals itself. I like to use colored pencils and I kind of have a heavy hand, so I like how these images show up nice and bold. Again, 
don't look if you don't want spoiler alerts. Um, just want to give you an idea what some of these pages look like. And I really didn't embellish much uh, with other mediums at all. I found that the colored pencils really did a brilliant job on these items. Okay, the cardinal page. I did do something different with this one. I used my Ganzai Tambi paints, my watercolor paints, and decided to do this cardinal with that. <clears throat> Sometimes I do look at the solutions. Sometimes I like to be surprised. Sometimes I don't. I want to know what I'm doing beforehand. So um, that's available. And again, I used the gold paints that were in my set to accent some of the areas on the uh, flowers and just a little bit on the cardinal itself. And I'm just holding on to my measuring tape because when, when I show you the next book, you're going to be surprised how large it is. And then there's the uh, last page. So my goal for this book is to try and finish it before the next one comes out. And I'm not exactly certain uh, when it does, but um, let's see here. Display until July. So maybe later on this autumn, this fall, maybe there'll be another one that comes out. So that's my coloring plan. Try and finish this one and then reward myself by getting the next one. Now this one, I actually have to switch places here. This, these Color Quest books, these are huge. I can't even fit it all in the view of my, uh, of my camera. <clears throat> so that's why, pardon me, <clears throat> I grabbed my measuring tape. Some of you might be familiar with this and how large this uh, color by number series is. In imperial measure, it is like almost 15 inches long. And in metric, that's about 38 centimeters. Not quite. 30, yeah, 37 centimeters. <laughs> it's a big book. And I absolutely love this one. The pages are perforated, so it was easy to take them out because sometimes it was easier to work with such a large page by taking uh, the, the pages out of it. So I'm not going to flip through the whole thing, um, but these are like not exactly a, a mystery color, but you know, if you do like to be surprised, you can, the, the color palette that is specific to the page, I mean, you can certainly just go at it, matching up that color palette and then let the image reveal itself. And a lot of the images look pixelated. So on a blank page, and I'll show you on here, you can't tell what the picture is. Again, unless you go to the back and check with the uh, solutions page. It's here somewhere. Okay, my favorite, one of my favorite pages was this one with the clownfish. Really enjoyed doing that one. And so again, as a reward for completing this whole book, I bought the next one. And it has a combination of images from that previous book. So that clownfish page was in here again. So, and I like that. Now I had a chance to color it again. So in here, the Color Quest Colossal Extreme Color by Number, pictures to reveal. There's images of cities. I know that's, um, I think that's Sydney, Australia, isn't it? And I did a few here. So again, if you don't, if you don't want to know what the images are, you might want to just look away for a moment. <laughs> Otherwise, here we go. I'm going to show you the pictures that I completed. I've I probably won't tear them out this time. I think I'm going to keep them intact in the book. And I'm I'm kind of going in order. I don't know if I'll stay that way, but for the time being, I love all these pictures, so I'm just going to start at the beginning and just keep following through. 
So the first one is this eagle. And again, right, it has that pixelated look when it's done. A wallpaper. This was a lot of fun too. I think I used uh, colored pencils for this one. But usually I'm, I'm using my Heath Throne, um, you know, felt tip markers for these images. This looks like maybe San Francisco Bridge. Now, so far, this is my favorite page. I, when I saw the palette here, <clears throat> because like a page looks like this, right? Like, you can't tell what it is. These are hexagon shapes. Some are square. Oh, some are, some are a little more obvious. You can tell that it looks like a city or buildings, but a lot of them you don't know. So I suspected that this was going to be an image of an animal. And so I looked at the solution because I really wanted to make sure that I matched up the colors as closely as possible because it does make the animal pictures turn out much better. And so I'm glad I looked because I saw that they were these little otters and I love otters. And here they're holding, you know, their paws, they're holding their hands. And that's what they do when they're about to go to sleep as they're floating in the water so that they don't drift apart from each other. Isn't that sweet? Oh, I just love them so much. And I practiced a little bit with some stickles for the water because I thought that the water turned out a little greenish. And so I added some stickles just to make the water sparkly. And then I always add a little white dot into the black eyes just to give it a little bit of life. And I think, oh yeah, and, the, and of course the clown pick, the uh, clownfish. I think that's what they are, clownfish and a little angelfish. So I got to do that page again. So I completed, you know, quite a few pages in here, but there's lots left to do. See, as I flip through, I'm not spoiling it for you because you can't tell what, what this, you know, what these images are until you get the book. And again, if you're interested, um, that is what that book is like. Thank you so much for uh, letting me show these different favorite color by number books that I have. And I look forward to seeing you again and bye for now.